If your home or small office is accessing the Internet like most others, you have probably purchased low-cost DSL or cable modem service from your Internet service provider, and the Internet address that is assigned to your NAT router will probably change from time to time. Usually this will happen after a few hours of inactivity. In fact, your own computers are probably assigned a dynamic local IP address on your private network that also changes from time to time. Most of your computers won't be aware of this and won't be bothered by it. That's because most of the Internet-related activity that's important to typical computer users is based on relatively simple applications that have come to be known as client processes. However, as you gain more experience with the Internet, you may someday want to host one or more server processes. Server processes include web servers, print servers, file servers, game servers, mail servers, Internet voice servers, etc. If your setup is typical, you will have best success if you take three specific steps to overcome three problems for your servers. They are, one of three, the computer or appliance hosting each service will work best if you assign it an unchanging or static IP address on your local network so that your NAT router and the other computers in your network can easily find and communicate with the service. Two of three, you will need to tell your NAT router how to handle unsolicited incoming messages for the service. And three of three, you will need to inform the people that want to use the service of the public IP address that's assigned to your network by your ISP so they can find you and use the service. Other AskMrWizard.com movies have dealt with these three problems. If you need help with the first of these three problems, configuring a computer with a static IP address on your local network, consult the movie entitled Configuring Your Internet Connection Part 2 Static IP Specification. If you need help with the second of these three problems, telling your NAT router about a service that you are hosting, consult the movie entitled NAT Routers Part 3 Port Forwarding. If you need help with the third of those problems, informing interested people of the public IP address that your Internet service provider has assigned to your router, then consult the movie entitled Dynamic DNS. We are going to assume that your network configuration is typical and that your NAT router is using that IP address for its external interface. If you aren't familiar with NAT routers, and the way they reassign your IP addresses, then you should watch the movie entitled NAT Routers Part 1, Simple Routers for Small Networks. Your NAT router can make it possible to share your single Internet connection with multiple PCs. If you'd like to learn more about that, consult the movie entitled Simple NAT Routers Part 2, Multiple PCs. Altogether, these video resources from AskMrWizard.com can make it easy for you to put together a powerful Internet resource sharing your services with everybody that's interested.